Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So when I do the show, I actually use two separate microphones. For the on-camera portion right now, I'm using a Sennheiser boom mic. It's right up here. And I'll show you a record of my iPhone here so you can see the mic. And this mic is attached to my Sony a7S III through this K3M adapter. So it goes directly into the camera. And that's a big reason why I like this mic is I'm able to record directly to the camera so I don't need to sync in post. And I also prefer it over a lav, which I used to do. So I don't need to mess with a lav mic every time. It's set in one place and it works all the time. Now, when I record the on-screen portion and I'm recording with ScreenFlow, I use a USB mic and that I have on a boom right here. This is a Logitech Blue mic. And I love this microphone, I love the sound of it and it's super easy to position and use when recording the screen. Great, but they sound really different from each other. So today on MapRec Studio, I'm gonna show you how I match these mics to each other in Fonica Pro. All right, here in Final Cut, I've got two audio only clips in my timeline. I've set the clip appearance to audio only, so we have these nice big waveforms. I've also made them very big. You can hit shift command plus or minus to change those. I've opened up my audio meters and the only change I've made to these clips, I didn't do anything to the Sennheiser clip. This is the Sennheiser shotgun mic and this is the Logitech blue mic. The Logitech blue mic, I increased the volume by eight decibels just so they match the level a little closer and it makes it a little easier to hear the differences. Now I recorded a single phrase simultaneously to both mics, so they're both recording the exact same thing. Let's take a listen. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. Okay, so the levels are very close to each other, but they sound very different due to the different EQ. Now, there's multiple ways you can go around making these match, but this is a way that I like to very much. I personally like this Logitech Blue Mic sound more and I'd like to force this Sennheiser one to match it. So with it selected, I can do a couple of things. I can either go to the Enhancements pop-up menu here and choose Match Audio. I can use a keyboard shortcut, Shift-Command-M, or up in the Audio Inspector, there is an Equalization option. And by the way, if you don't see this Equalization option, it may be because your audio configuration is set to dual mono or even more than that if you have multiple components. If you selected the overall component container, you won't see that option for equalization. You need to select individual components. But if you're set to stereo, it'll be available. Now, if you turn this on, by default, you'll get this very simple graphical equalizer. However, let me turn that back off. If you go down and select match, you'll get the exact same result if you had selected match audio. So it's asking for a clip to match this audio too. And I'll click on this clip here to select it. And then I'll click apply match. And it looks like the volume just got a little lower, but let's play it. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. And it does sound closer. Let's bring up the level a little bit to make them match levels a little more and listen. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. All right, so they sound better. The second one still sounds deeper, like it has more low frequency volume to it. So with this first one selected, up in the audio inspector, we can click this icon here to open up the auto filter and see what it's doing. And you can see once it analyzed the second clip, the Logitech Blue Mic, that it found that this first mic had frequencies that need to be boosted on the low end and other frequencies need to be lowered on the even low to mid to high end. So this is the change that it made in order to make it match better. It's not quite good enough, but one thing we can do in order to get them to match each other is now match our Logitech Blue mic to the Sennheiser mic that's been adjusted because it's already closer. So I'll select this Logitech Blue mic clip, and this time I'll use the Enhancements menu and choose Match Audio. 
And this time I want to match it to this one and it will include, when I click on that and click apply match, it'll include the adjustments I made to that first clip. And let's play that. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. And it's better, we're still off on the volume a little bit, but let's make it about like that. Now let's see what it did. I'm gonna open up that filter for the second clip and put it right over the second clip. And you can see what went on here is it basically did the exact opposite because it found there was still a difference between the two. So instead of boosting the uh, lower frequencies, the volume of the lower frequencies of this first clip for the second clip, it lowered those because it needed to boost these to match this one. So it needed to lower these in order for them to both match better. So by matching to each other, we've got a pretty good match. With a little bit of volume adjustment, we could probably call it a day. But let's say that I really like this Logitech Blue mic sound and I don't want to adjust it in this way. What do we do? So one option is that I can drag on this slider in order to level out that change so there's no change being made. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to keep this up here and I'll show you why. I'm going to go back to the first clip. And for this analyzer, first I'm going to click on it to enable it and then click on the word pre so it says post. So it's going to analyze the audio frequency spectrums after the filter's been applied. And I'm just going to play a little bit of it. This is a test of audio. So I'm going to stop right after it says audio. And now we can see the distribution of levels across the audio spectrum. Let's see what it looks like on the other one. I'll turn on the analyzer, set it to post, and play to the same point. This is a test of audio. And now we can see how similar each of those look. It looks like I still need to boost the lower end a little higher. One thing I can do is use that same slider that I did on this clip, but on this clip, I'm gonna drag up, which will increase the amount of change across the frequency spectrum, which looks kind of like what we need to do here. We need to pull this up a little bit and pull this down a little bit. Let's run that analysis again before we play it. This is a test of audio. And we can see that's done a pretty good job. We have to do it again on the this second one. This is a test of audio. Again. And now, Visually, we have a closer match. Of course, it's your ears that matter the most, so let's play it back. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. And this one's still a little bit too high, but they're very, very close now. Finally, what we can do, let's find another representative word. This is a test of audio. So I'll stop right after audio. This is a test of audio. And if I compare them, they look very, very close. It looks like we need a little bit of boost here. One thing I'm gonna do is turn on fade extreme so we just don't get any boost at the very low end. But I still feel like I need a little bit more boost here on the low end and maybe bringing down the mids a little bit as well. We can adjust these frequency ranges simply by clicking and dragging directly above the graph and we can raise the volume of specific frequencies. Note the little tooltip there that says press shift to adjust Q. So if I add the shift key, it will adjust the range over which that volume adjustment is being affected. And if I wanna change my mind, I can just option click and it'll get rid of that. So once again, I'm gonna drag up, I'm gonna add the shift key to spread that out a little more to even it out. And then I'm gonna drag down a little bit here, just a touch. Maybe drag up here a little bit more and even that out. And let's play that back. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. And that's much better. Maybe I'll pull this down a little bit. Okay, now that I've got a match, I'm gonna move this filter out of the way, make sure this first clip is selected. I can save my changes here as an effect preset. So I'll click that. And now I can name my effect preset and save it in a category. You can see I've already created a category called My Audio Effects. And if we go over to the effects browser, there's my category and I've already saved it here, match Sennheiser to Logitech Blue Mic. So I can use that to very quickly match going forward. Now I'm not really done. What I like to do 
with any audio before I'm done is to add a limiter. You could also add a compressor. I don't find the compressor necessary for my particular voice, but a compressor can help narrow the dynamic range and bring up very low sound and bring down very high volume in order to have them a little more even. I find I don't need that, but uh, if we go back into my audio effects, Steve, uh, my partner Ripple, has given me a little preset of the limiter called Steve's voiceover enhancer. I'm gonna drop that on both these clips and we'll open that up from the audio inspector. And this is basically a brick wall or a way of bringing down any level to make sure it's not going above a specific amount. It adds some gain uh, and has a certain amount of time for its release and its output level. But the bottom line is it should make sure that I'm not peaking anytime if I get really excited and talk really loudly. So let's try that out. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. This is a test of audio from two different microphones in an attempt to get them to match each other. So that's how I match mics. How do you do it? Leave us a comment below, and we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.